Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios. Welcome to another Marvel Crisis Protocol painting tutorial. Today I'm painting up She-Hulk in comic style. If you've watched my Groot video, you know that the model paints up really quickly and then the black lining is a very time consuming step. She-Hulk's almost the exact opposite of that. I spend a lot of time here doing blends on her clothing and her skin, painting her face, and then the black lining is a really minimal part of this process. There's actually much more lining on her base than there is on the character. I'm taking a different approach to this miniature and painting each detail to completion before I move on to the next detail. So I'm going to do all the skin tones as step one. The reason I'm doing that is it makes this applicable to other miniatures. They can watch just the skin tone part and then paint Hulk the same way, for example. For step two, I'll be painting She-Hulk's eyes and face. Now her face does have some shading already, but this will be adding extra details like the eyebrows, the bottom lip, and so on. In step three, I'll be painting She-Hulk's clothing. That's gonna be the bodysuit, the gloves, and the shoes. It's really straightforward. In step four, I'll be painting the girder she's tossing. It's really not that exciting, but it's still an important part of the model, and girders come up a lot in Crisis Protocol. And in the very exciting step five, I'll be painting yet another concrete base. In step six, I'll be highlighting She-Hulk's hair. It's already got a base coat because it actually shared a color in common with the skin tone, so I just kind of did that at the same time. And of course, step seven, comic style lining. One of the last things we ever do and my absolute favorite step. I feel it really just brings the character out of these miniatures and it's optional, but it's really worthwhile. And finally, the bonus round. There's a pop can on the base I completely forgot about, so here it is. And now that you know what's coming, let's do something epic. I'm gonna start painting She-Hulk's skin with a base coat of P3 Iosin Green. I'll be highlighting that with P3 Worm Green and adding some shadows with P3 Coal Black. Finally, I'll be adding a second highlight with P3 Sulfuric Yellow. Now the base coat is really straightforward. You just wanna get a nice even coat of Iosin Green across all the skin. So that's gonna be her exposed legs, the arms, her face, and of course her fingertips. She's wearing fingerless gloves. Now I've gone ahead and primed this model with a Zenithal primer that is you know, black all over than white from above. That is really just because it shows up better on camera, it makes the model easier to read in a video, and it makes it a lot easier for white balancing the video. Because I'm trying to get smooth, even saturation, it actually kind of works against me. I would be better off with a pure white primer or even a pure gray. The black is extra work trying to cover it up. So if you can, prime it white. Now, as a general rule, I like to paint in as few coats as possible. I like to get nice, bright colors, and I choose paints that purposely are very saturated and very opaque but go back and do as many coats as you need to make sure you have a good solid base coat. Now I'll be using P3 Worm Green to highlight the skin tones. This is probably one of the longest steps of this process because A, Worm Green is a little bit on the translucent side. It takes two to three coats to really build the color up to a nice opaque point. And B, there's just a lot of highlights to add. There's a lot of exposed skin here and it just takes time to do that. So when I'm choosing where to place these highlights, I basically look at the model top down and any skin that is facing upward and is easily visible gets a highlight. And I say easily visible because due to the pose here, there's some skin that's hiding behind the girder or you know, with the pose of her legs. Some of it's just hidden behind a knee and so on and it doesn't really need a highlight there. With the face, you kind of cheat a little bit. It's got nothing to do with facing upwards. Instead, it's more facing outwards and you're building up your major lines, planes of the face. So you're looking at the nose, the cheekbone, the jawbone, the lips, the chin, the forehead. Those are areas you want your highlights. And so you want a little bit of you know, a dark spot under the eyebrow. You want a little bit of a darker point underneath the cheekbone, underneath the jaw, and so on. If you want to see this painting process in more detail, the full raw uncut video is available to my patrons at patreon.com slash epic duck. It's roughly four and a half hours long. There's no audio, there's no narration. It's just the raw video I work from, but you can see every single brushstroke. Patrons also get PDF companion guides for these painting videos as well, which means you can reference the individual colors and the step-by-step -step process without having to flip through a video. I hope you'll give it a look. Up next, I'm going to be using P3 Coal Black to add some shadows to the skin tone. The placement for these is basically the reciprocal of the highlights, where I'm going to be looking at more or less the bottom of the model. There's some times where I cheat a little bit and add a shadow to accent a muscle, for example, that maybe doesn't really need it from a lighting perspective, but it really makes the model look more ripped and dynamic. 
I'm also painting a very small linear shadow where the bodysuit meets the skin. Honestly, this is probably going to be mostly covered up by black lining, but in the event that a little bit of it persists, I do want a tiny, tiny bit of a shadow there. It just makes the lining that much more effective. Now, She-Hulk's legs are interesting because the front face of both of her calves are basically pointing downward because of the pose she's in. So you have the opportunity to create some really big shadows, and that actually makes her look very dynamic. It makes it bring her thighs into the forefront and really give the model a sense of motion, make it feel like she's stepping forward. Now in She-Hulk's face, I'm going to be adding just a couple of shadows underneath the jaw, behind the ear, and across the hairline. I'm also going to just base coat her hair coal black. I need it done later, and coal black's on my brush and my palette right now, so I'm just saving some time. Now I'm going to take the skin tone one step further with a tiny highlight of P3 Sulfuric Yellow. This is going to be focused just on the middle of each of the Worm Green highlights, and a few key points on the face. On her face, I'll be highlighting the brow ridge, the nose, the cheekbone, the top lip, and the chin. Now to finish out the skin, I'm coming back with a little bit more Iosin Green, and I'm just using this to fill in some spaces where my Worm Green highlights and my Coal Black Shadows got really close together or met right up, and I just lost the mid-tone. So I'm just doing a little bit of fixing, just working my way around the model, finding places where I just goofed a little bit. I'm going to begin painting She-Hulk's eyes with an underbelly blue base coat. I like using this for the white of the eye because it's a little bit off-white. True eyes are never pure white and it makes a model look just bonkers insane when they are. For the pupil, I'll be painting the inside of the eye with coal black. We use coal black a lot of places on this mini. It ties everything together. The pupil is basically just the inner half of the eye. From there, I'm going to take a little dot of Mora White and just put that where the coal black and the underbelly blue meet, just a tiny little pinpoint. And now I'm back to coal black again to shape the eye. I'm going to be painting the underside of the eyebrow and then a little bit of a cat eye on the outside corner. This is one of the things I preach when I'm teaching people how to paint eyes, is that you can create smaller and smaller shapes by overlapping larger shapes. You don't necessarily have to be able to make the smallest point to produce it with your paintbrush. I'm also going to paint her lower lip with coal black. As a rule of thumb, I don't bother painting the upper lip on female characters. It's usually too thin and narrow to bother painting. She-Hulk's teeth are a little bit exposed, so I'm going to come in with a little tiny line of Mora White and just hit this recessed area above the upper lip. I get a little bit on the lip, so I'm going to come back here with coal black, just touch the lip up. Next up, I'm going to be working on She-Hulk's bodysuit. I'm going to begin with some Pro Krill Purple. I'm using Pro Krill here rather than P3 simply because I like the purple offering better. It's a little bit more opaque, it's a nicer color. P3 makes two really nice purples, Beaten Purple and Bad Brews. They're great colors, but they're also just a little bit too dark for this. And rather than trying to mix up something to lighten them, I just went straight to the pot on this one. The bodysuit's basically broken up into three panels. There's a big white panel in the middle and then purple panels on the sides plus a little bit of purple ribbing through the middle, and of course, all the ribbing around the outside as well. Then we've also got the gloves to think about, and on her boots or her shoes, whatever you want to call these feet covering apparatuses, I did the buckles or the Velcro-y laces, whatever these big things are, they're not really shoelaces. The big straps, anyway, I did them in purple. The rest of it's going to be white. And speaking of P3 beaten purple, I'm using that here as the shadow color for the purple parts of the bodysuit. You can see I'm leaving the ribbing alone. I want it to be just a little bit lighter so it stands out. So I'm really just working the shadow into the wrinkles of the fabric and giving a little bit of curvature to the thigh and some deep shadows under the arm. Just areas where there naturally would be a little bit of a shadow. I'm not going overboard with it. We're going to get some extra depth out of the black lining coming up. And also I'm going to add a layer of highlights on top of this. But, but there are definitely parts here that warrant a little bit of a shadow. And here I've switched over to some P3 Underbelly Blue. This is that nice, light, off-white blue that I really like using as a base coat for blue. It gives me a little bit of room to add some highlights, and it's just a nice, cool undertone. Works really well. Very good coverage on this color as well. It's a very good, like, one to two coat kind of coverage. And I'm just hitting everything that's not purple at this point. It's pretty straightforward.
And here I've mixed a little bit of P3 Moro White into the Pro Acryl Purple. This creates just a nice, lively, lighter version of that purple that I can use for some highlights. And you can see I'm basically just following along where there's wrinkles in the fabric, picking out the top of the wrinkle, picking out the top of the little bits of ribbing. There's not a lot of highlighting going on. It's pretty subtle. It's really just edge highlights and picking out wrinkles. So now I'm using P3 Mora White. I've had this pot so long that I've actually worn the label right off of it, but just trust me, that's what's in there. Using this as a general highlight for the white parts of the bodysuit, so picking out her midsection here where there's a lot of muscle definition. A little bit of shading on the top of the chest up towards the shoulders, the toes of her shoes, all the really obvious points. So I decided there wasn't enough contrast in the white parts of the model. And so I'm bringing in an extra layer of shadow here using some P3 Troll Blood base. Now I'm using Troll Blood base because I used Underbelly Blue as my base coat color, which is a little bit of a blue off-white. So this just adds a little more blue as well as becoming just a little bit darker. And it pairs very nicely with the Underbelly Blue. One really just builds on top of the other very progressively, very naturally. And it just gives our shadows a nice sense of coolness to them that kind of ties into the same tones we've got going with the skin tone where we've got like a bit of a cooler color in the shadows of the skin as well. So She-Hulk is tossing a girder, and notably I have a girder already on Spider-Man's base. So I want them to look visually the same, use the same colors, the same techniques, so that the two miniatures look like they belong together on the same table. So things to note are the colors I've used here are Citadel colors as opposed to P3 like the rest of the model here so far. Not a big deal, just means I'm using some Scrag Ground and some Zamisi Desert. I also lined every edge to give it a really solid illustrated look and that actually works really well in She-Hulk's favor because she doesn't have a lot of edges to illustrate and so it actually lets me bring that illustrated feel to this piece in a really meaningful way. So I'm starting with an even coat on the whole piece with Scrag Brown from Citadel and the whole piece like in and out, top and bottom, the underside of the girder, etc. All of it's getting the same color. It's probably gonna take two coats, maybe three, to get a nice, even, consistent tone, and that's fine. The girder is a pretty isolated element, so you can work on it pretty quickly. The only thing to watch out for is that you don't get paint on her hands. That's the only gotcha. So for the first highlight on the girder, I'm mixing a 50-50 blend of Scrag Brown and Zamisi Desert. And I'm basically just picking out the top edges on the sides here. And then on the top, you can see the girder's basically broken up into three different planes. I'm treating them each independently, kind of creating a highlight at the top edge, the forward edge of each piece. And the highlight's taking on almost a crescent shape, so I'm grabbing both the edges on the side and kind of pulling it into this bigger highlight I'm making at the front. And the intent here is that we create almost a sense of motion with the highlight because we're moving from, you know, the back part of the girder being dark into a, you know, lighter point to the front. It draws the eye forward, it gives it a sense of forward motion. It makes it look like it's actually being tossed as opposed to just deadlifted. On the upward facing inside surface of the girder, I'm basically matching this same highlight, so it kind of just mirrors itself from top to this second top. In the next step of the video, I'm painting the base, and while I'm doing that, I give the base two highlights. And what ended up happening is I looked at the girder, which only had one highlight, and went, this doesn't really fit. And so I add a second highlight to the girder later. Now that does happen later in the video, in real time, but through the magic of editing, I've cropped that in here right now. So just ignore the fact that the base is kind of done in this shot. I'm using straight Zamisi Desert for this, and it's just building on the shape of the highlights I've already created. I'm going to start by base coating the base with a 50-50 mix of Mechanicus Standard Grey and Administratum Grey, both from Citadel. I approach all my Crisis Protocol bases the same because I want them to feel cohesive, like they belong together. 
And this is the mix I've just been using since day one, so I'm just sticking with it. Now this base does have a little opportunity for some variation. There is a very notable chunk of sidewalk here on the side with that little, you know, stippled ramp. And we do have some rubble here as well. Now, in my head, the rubble's just made of concrete and should look the same. But you could treat it differently if you wanted to, if you figure she's standing on a chunk of broken building or something. It's an opportunity to bring some extra color in. I just don't feel the need to. So next, I'll be using Administratum Gray as a highlight for the base. And you can see I basically use it as a sort of an edge highlight, a little bit broader than that. But I'm effectively finding all the corners and just kind of picking them out as well as hitting the edge along some of the bigger round parts. There's just a few segments that are really big that feel weird if you leave them alone. Like for instance, right here. With all these little dimples here, I'm just trying to put a little dot on the top of each one and there is an uphill slope to it, so the top is kind of obvious. It thankfully also points towards the outside of the base, so it makes the highlight a little more visible. Just a good placement in general. So with the pile of rubble, I'm trying to put the highlights on the outermost, uppermost edge. And what I mean by that is where we've got like a full plane, I'm trying to just keep the highlight on the top side. But if it's sort of like an exterior edge, I'll highlight that as well. And so what that does, it creates almost a sense of motion as the highlights move up towards the foot and give us just a little bit of a focal direction. So for the final highlight on the base, I'm using P3 Mora White. Any white paint will do, Mora White's just what I have on hand. And I'm using my Administratum Gray highlights as my guidepost here, and I'm really just keeping this highlight focused in the middle of each of the Administratum Gray highlights. So when you know that gray highlight wraps around a corner, this just hugs the corner a lot tighter. And as I get to the rubble on the base, I'm being really, really picky, and just kind of dropping this on corners. It's not really wrapping around at all. It's just almost just like a quick point on the corner of the highlight. And that also makes it a pretty quick process. All right, working on She-Hulk's hair, I'm coming back in with that P3 coal black to finish the base coat up. Now I did base coat all this when I was working on the head, but there was just a few spots where I feel the coverage wasn't as strong as it could be. So I'm just going back over those once really quickly, just touching that up and then we'll move on to the highlights really quickly here. To highlight the coal black, I'll be using P3 Eldritch. I love this color. Now, a decent amount of She-Hulk's hair is actually obscured by the girder, so you don't have to highlight everything. It actually saves you a little bit of work, but I wanna make sure the highlights around the face really frame it in, and we get a sense of flowy motion to the ponytail off the back of the head. So basically where there's a big thick strand that I can easily reach, it's getting a highlight. It's as simple as that. I'm leaving the coal black in all the recesses, just throwing the Eldritch here on top. Now you might find as you're doing this that a couple spots need a second coat just to get that color really up and nice and punchy. Definitely do that. Anytime you feel like you need to add another coat or two to really get your color values up, go for it. Now while I'm in here, I also decided to add a quick little highlight to her eyebrows because it just started to look like the color didn't match the hair anymore. Now to finish the hair off, I've mixed a little bit of my P3 Mora White into my P3 Eldritch, just got a nice bright version of Eldritch, and I'm using this as a bit of a focal point highlight within my Eldritch highlights. Same way I approach the base, it just gets a narrower scope. And I'm really letting the curvature of the hair strands decide where this hits. It should be at the topmost point in a curve because that's where the light would reflect off most naturally. Now, sometimes that reflective point is actually the bottom of a curve instead of the top, but thankfully this hair doesn't really lie that way, so you don't have to think about this too hard. Okay, it's time for comic style lining, my absolute favorite part of comic style miniature painting. I'll of course be using Higgins Black Magic. This is my go-to ink for this style. It's not the only ink that works, it's just my favorite. Some other inks I've regularly used are Dale or Rowney FW Black and Liquitex Carbon Black ink. There's others out there as well. Use what you can find locally. Look for waterproof, artist inks and you can find these in the calligraphy section in the inking section in the drawing section of your local art store you're not going to find them typically at a miniature centric store you're going to find them more in a fine art store 
So typically when I'm inking a model, I start at the bottom and just work my way up, but I also occasionally will just jump around to an area that I think either needs some definition or I need to just kind of see how it's gonna look. My inking process kind of breaks down into three different steps, but because I've been doing this so long, I start to do them concurrently. So I'm gonna tell you how they work in practice, but you'll see that that's not really what I'm doing. So my first step is what I call the outlines. This is basically taking the details the sculpt has given you and just drawing lines around them. And that's a lot of what I'm doing here. You can see I'm going around the rubble, separating it from the base, you know, it's isolating the different elements of her footwear and so on. Now, She-Hulk's costume has a lot of ribbing that's sort of like a raised edge or a raised hem, and it basically means you're outlining almost every edge twice, but it looks really striking, it's really good, it's really easy, and they're actually a nice, deep, easy groove to follow. You won't find it too challenging. The second step in my inking process is what I call block shadows or volume shadows, and that's where I take a big swath of black ink, and I usually use it to drop a big, deep shadow in places like the underside of an arm, between legs, anywhere where I want to either create a sense of depth through silhouetting or where an area just isn't really normally visible, or I want to use a big deep shadow for dramatic effect. Now, She-Hulk oddly is a character I don't do that on. There's not really a lot of opportunity for it here, and because she's a larger character with a very wide open stance, I didn't feel I really needed deep dark shadows to kind of give her a sense of depth she really has that on her own and this here you're seeing now this is sort of the last step in my comic inking process and that's little freehand details that's the details that aren't part of the sculpt and that's things like these little blemishes on the concrete adding wrinkles to fabric that aren't really there little tears just divots blemishes and of course, adding some shading to the model through the use of hatch marks. And hatch marks are just a series of small parallel lines that taper off and give the impression of a gradient going from dark to light. And I generally pull those lines out of a line I've already created. So I've outlined something and then I pull a little bit of shading away from it and taper off the tip. And so you get these sort of like elongated triangles that are running side by side. But again, She-Hulk doesn't have a lot of that going on because there's not a lot of places I'm creating big, deep shadows. Now, She-Hulk's butt is one of the few places where I actually add a bit more of a black line, a little bit of a shadow. And that's basically just to accent the curve that's actually there in the model because I felt like once I painted it white, it looked a little flat. It didn't look quite right. And given this deep stepping stance she has, there should be a little bit of a curve there. You can see I'm also using black lines to accent a little bit of her form and musculature. There was a little bit under the bicep there, a little bit of a line under the breast, just to give it a little more shape. And here I'm adding a big black fill shadow underneath her ponytail, just to give it a little bit more color depth. And here just a little bit of a black line where the calf and the thigh touch because we've got a deep crease there. And now we're just outlining the fingers, separating them from the girder, this is just separating elements from each other. This is like that step one black lining. Now, one of the most important aspects of almost any character is their face. And here I'm using a little bit of black lining to help separate She-Hulk's face from her hair, basically just kind of tracing in the hairline and adding a very, very, very fine line underneath her bottom lip. Again, don't add any extra lining to the top lip, you're gonna accidentally paint a mustache. Now I want She-Hulk's hair to look kind of light and airy, but it is also black hair, or at least off black, kind of greenish blue. And what I'm doing is I'm adding black lines kind of as a shadow to the larger clumps of hair. So I'm not adding them everywhere. The hair is not completely, you know, meshed with deep black lines. It's just enough to kind of imply some deeper shadows in a few places. Now the girder is interesting because this is the one part of the model I really want to try and capture that illustrated style. And so I'm outlining basically every single edge here, even the exterior edges, as opposed to just these interior ones. So you'll see I'll bring the brush along the sharp outer edge here. I'm using the side of the brush to really just capture the edge. And I'm gonna do this all the way around all the sides of the girder. And what that does is it gives you a black line in place no matter what angle you look 
at the girder from. And here again, I'm just switching over to a little bit of hatch mark shading, just bringing that into the underside of the girder. You know, my process isn't perfect. I bounce back and forth a little bit. Part of that is just familiarity with how I create these lines in this artwork is sometimes I just know where a shadow is going to go and since I'm already there I just drop it in. Sometimes it's because I'm not quite sure about a color choice I've made and I want to add a little bit of a shadow to see if my dark tone was dark enough or maybe even too dark. You know if I put down a little bit of a black shadow and I don't really notice it it probably means I need to lighten up my base coats as a whole in an area and so sometimes I'll just kind of jump ahead I'm not always doing things in a progression. Now the whole underside of the girder is downward facing, so I'm going to cover the whole thing in a series of parallel lines, just right from one side to the other. And in effect, these lines are doing two things for us. They're making that side of the girder look darker by bringing in a certain amount of black. And so that's cutting down the color of the scrag brown base coat that's already there. But it's also building on that illustrated feel. It's an element that would be very much at home in a hand-drawn comic panel. And that's really the kind of look and feel I'm trying to pull onto my comic style miniatures is the idea that they could have been hand drawn, but are instead a physical object. One of the very last things I'm going to do here is just outline the bevel of the base. This is something that's kind of specific to Crisis Protocol bases. They have this little inset bevel and that's there to allow the range tools to kind of just ride the edge a little bit. But it also gives us the opportunity to kind of break the scenic element of the base apart from the edge of the base, the rim of the base. And here, one more time, a lot of parallel lines creating a hatch marked, you know, transition or gradient. And I'm just adding a little bit of a black line across the top of that same detail. Again, it's trying to give it that illustrated in place kind of feel. Now this isn't comic style lining, but it also doesn't really need its own steps. I'm just throwing it in here. I'm grabbing a little bit of the Pro Krill Purple we already used for part of her bodysuit. I'm just painting the base room with that color. This is a personal thing. I like to try and give my Crisis Protocol characters a base room that denotes the affiliation I'm most likely to play them in. And with She-Hulk, I felt that was going to be A-Force, and I didn't have a color picked for A-Force yet. So I just grabbed the purple that was already part of her costume. All right, we're on to the bonus round. This is the little pop can or soda can if you prefer that's a little basing element that I added and then completely forgot about all day. I'm starting with a base coat of P3 Amethyst Rose, going for a bit of a Coke can feel. From there, I'm going to paint the ends of it with a little bit of the 50-50 gray mix that I already had from working on the base. It was just sitting in my wet palette, so I grabbed it. I like to reuse colors when I can especially when they're already on the palette. From there, I'm gonna add some really small highlights using the brighter Astronomican Gray. And then I'm gonna highlight the can with a little bit of P3 Kador Red base. It's just a nice, vibrant, bright red. It's honestly one of my favorite colors. And then a little bit of comic style black lining on the can because we can't forget that. Higgins Black Magic one more time. I'm outlining the can and then just adding a few little lines to give it a little bit of a sense of shading and kind of accent that crumpled zone in the middle. So I'm gonna wrap this video up with a friendly reminder that if you wanna see this painting process unedited, the long cut video, the complete raw video I work from is available to my patrons at patreon.com slash epic duck. As a bonus, patrons also get a PDF companion version of this painting video. Thanks again for watching and until next time, do something epic. I just want to take a moment and thank everyone who has supported the creation of this video and many others over the years. My patrons over at patreon.com slash epic duck, my Twitch subscribers, and just my loyal fans. There's been a huge outpouring of support, especially for comic style painting, but just everything I do in general, there's people behind me. I can't do this without you. I appreciate it so much. Everyone, your names are all over here. You know who you are. Everyone who's helped make this happen over the years who's kept food on the table, kept the roof over my head, kept the lights on, kept the stream going. I appreciate each and every single one of you. If you want to join the flock, you can do that at patreon.com slash epic duck. Five bucks a month gets you access to some behind the scenes stuff, gets you the unedited versions of these videos, PDF guides, and my eternal gratitude. Thank you so much.